What's up, everybody? Welcome to part two of the Thomas Tech Sports Podcast tonight. I am your host once again, Ryan Thomas, bringing you the latest edition of my podcast, The Thomas Take, established in January of 2016. So we are on our one-year mark, probably over 60, 70 episodes. I lost count, to be quite honest with you. So when we reach our 100th, I'll just assume that it'll be in March or April. Maybe I'll put it on my birthday or something. Who knows? But anyway, um, last part I did, the first part of today's show, I talked about Tito Ortiz versus Chael Sonnen. Was the fight a fix? Tune in, find out what my opinion was uh, on that fight and what I think is next for Chael Sonnen. Um, This part of the podcast is dedicated to George St. Pierre, the former UFC welterweight champion, the longtime UFC welterweight champion, the man that walked away from the sport in 2013 after a split decision victory over Johnny Hendricks, uh, UFC 167, the 20th year anniversary event of the UFC. Whew, it doesn't really feel like that long ago. It's 2017 now, 2013 then, and as a brief history lesson, you know, I'm a huge mixed martial arts fan. I'm really excited that the UFC is coming to Buffalo in um, April, on April 8th. And really the one guy, when I think of all the fighters that I've watched, all the fights that I've watched, from the first fight I ever watched in, U- in the UFC, which was Forrest Griffin versus Stefan Bonner, that was the first fight I ever watched in its entirety uh, in my UFC fandom history. Uh, and that fight got me hooked from that moment on. Um, actually, I watched that entire season of The Ultimate Fighter, and then, you know, that was the the fight. That still is the fight. Um, but of all the fights that I've ever watched, the one guy that really drew me in to the UFC, the guy that I would wait in a line to get a table to watch at a bar to, to watch his fights, to watch the entire pay-per-view, to learn about the other fighters, just to see him in the main event, was George St. Pierre. In my eyes, he's the greatest UFC fighter of all time. He defended his belt against Hall of Famers, legends, like BJ Penn, like Matt Hughes. Um, He had that knockout loss to Matt Serra, and the way he came back was unprecedented. I don't think we'll ever see it again. To lose your title after just winning it, in knockout fashion to a man that you were supposed to beat, that everybody thought you were going to beat, and to come back and beat Matt Hughes to get that shot again, and then to beat Matt Sarah to get your belt back, and then to go on this gigantic run through the last you know, eight years of his career as a champion, for those reasons, I'd say he's the greatest of all time. Um, the way he represented the sport was me versus the world. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go up against the mold of the UFC. That TRT is okay. That performance enhancing drugs is okay. I'm gonna be the adversary to that. I'm gonna be the guy that's gonna say, "Hey, this is not right." And that was the reason why he walked away. There was a lot of factors as to why he walked away. That was the main reason. He knew that the sport was a dirty sport at the time. Fighters were not uh, performing. In, in the rightful circumstances of the, of, the, of the sport. They were performing to get an edge, trying to get an edge as much as they possibly could, where GSP was a naturally gifted, trained, crafted, molded athlete from the moment he was you know, trying to become an, an MMA fighter in the UFC to being the champion, the defending champion. You, you look at the physical makeup of George St. Pierre, he is the body of a, a Greek god. His body is sculpted to a T of what a fighter would look like, what a fighter should look like. A pure athlete, best takedown defense, best takedown offense, speed, power, uh, agility, flexibility, dexterity, transitional game. He has it all. He's the perfect mixed martial artist and it showed 
in the cage. He he dominated each opponent pillar to post for 25 minutes. And I admire that. I admire a guy that can go into a fight with all this pressure attached to him, attached to himself, of being the champion, the guy that people are tuning in to either see win or tuning in to see lose. And that's what it became. He would defend his title again and again and again. People would tune in to see whether this long-time reigning champion would fall. And he never did. He never... He retired as a champion. He retired with a split decision victory, but the three judges said he won three out of five rounds and he won the fight. So whether, you know, I thought he won the fight or, you know, Joe Schmo thought he won the fight, it doesn't matter. The three of, the three judges thought he won three out of five rounds. And that was that. He decided he needed to hang it up. And over the course of the last three, almost, you know, four years now, that he has been out of the sport, this, the UFC has changed. Essentially, when GSP walked out, Conor McGregor walked in. And the re- the revolution that Conor McGregor has started with within his own name and within the sport of fighters taking money fights, fighters looking to get paid because of the bullseye that Conor McGregor put on himself with his paydays, other fighters in the UFC are saying, hey, where's my piece? As they should. Especially guys that have been in the UFC a lot longer than Conor McGregor has. Especially guys that have defended their belts multiple times, like the Demetrius Johnsons of the world, that make the 250 k per fight, if that, while Conor McGregor makes 4 to $5 million per fight. That is a problem. While Ronda Rousey gets paid $3 million in a fight, and Amanda Nunes gets paid 80000 in a fight, in which Amanda Nunes was the champ, Ronda Rousey was the challenger, and Amanda Nunes iced her in 48 seconds. So the, the dynamic of the sport is a lot different now. The stars have come and gone. GSP was one of them. Anderson Silva's outside of his prime, it's safe to say. And John Jones has continued to shoot himself in the foot time and time again. And obviously, the giant fall from grace from Ronda Rousey. So GSP is kind of the elephant in the room, so to speak, for the UFC. He retired on top, retired as the welterweight champion. The belt was vacated. Johnny Hendricks and Robbie Lawler duked it out twice to see who was the better man. Hendricks won one. Lawler won one. Uh, I think they actually fought three times, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, And Lawler won that one too. I could be wrong on that. I'd have to go back and look, but... Lawler was the champ. He defended his belt against Rory McDonald, defended his belt against Carlos Condit, um, and then lost it to Tyron Woodley. And Tyron Woodley defended his belt versus uh, Stephen Thompson, albeit in a draw. The champion keeps his belt. It's a draw. It's a tie. So the, everything stays the same. They're redoing that fight again, and that is its own entity. So if GSP were to come back, I don't know if it would make much sense for him to come back to this welterweight division. He left the welterweight division behind, and frankly, the division itself moved on. And there's a lot of guys in that division that deserve title shots, one of them being Damian Maia, the other one being possibly eventually Jorge Masvidal, who came off a was coming off a great performance versus Donald Cerrone. I think if GSP were to come back, he would come back as a middleweight. And frankly, I think the UFC needs George St. Pierre to come back. And I'll tell you why. Obviously, with Ronda Rousey's mighty fall, she's not coming back. I think she's retiring. John Jones is unreliable. Whether he fights the winner of Anthony Rumble Johnson versus DC in Buffalo or not, the stigma that's attached to his name is a bad one. He doesn't provide excitement. The return of John Jones isn't one that has people jumping up in their seats saying, Woohoo, John Jones is coming back. We still have that bitter taste in our mouths of the pullout of UFC 200 within the last 24, 48 hours that were remaining to, to, until the event. Brock Lesnar? No. I, I don't care to see him fight in the UFC again. I don't know about you guys. Um, especially with the with the fakeness 
that is surrounding his his uh, name with the steroid uh, positive steroid test that was that was the with the Mark Hunt fight. That was just a huge, colossal pardon my French fuck up clusterfuck uh, between the UFC and Mark Hunt. Mark Hunt should get whatever he asked for for the fact that he took over a hundred punches to the head from Brock Lesnar when Brock Lesnar was juiced to the gills. His testosterone was four times higher than it was supposed to be. He was taking pills that were not on the accepted substances of USADA's list. We'll just put it that way. So Brock Lesnar, no. John Jones, no. Ronda Rousey, no. The last one is Conor McGregor. Conor is not fighting anytime soon in the UFC. I hate to tell you guys this, but he's not. He wants that Floyd Mayweather fight. Floyd Mayweather is saying he wants to fight. It'll just be a perpetual teeter-totter between McGregor being up, saying he wants to fight, Mayweather being down, saying he doesn't want to fight, McGregor being down, saying he doesn't want to fight, and Mayweather being up, saying he does want to fight. It's just a chess match between two guys with two massive egos that, I don't even care to see. I don't care to see that fight. I wouldn't watch it for free. Connor can go fight Floyd Mayweather if he wants, if Uncle Dana, Daddy Dana will let him. Who cares? I don't care. I don't enjoy watching Floyd Mayweather fight. It, Floyd would turn it into a snooze fest, and the Jim, the Jim Lampleys, the, the uh, Max Kellermans, the hardcore boxing aficionados, commentators would be given every round to Floyd Mayweather just because Conor would be missing so badly and Floyd would be landing his pillow hands that it would just be a terrible fight. I don't even care to even talk about it anymore. I'm sick of hearing about it. Conor is not fighting in the UFC for quite some time. They put that interim belt tag on the on the Habib versus Tony fight for a reason. I wouldn't be surprised if the winner of the Habib versus Tony fight actually defended the interim belt before Conor McGregor came back to the UFC. I I see a real battle ensuing between Conor McGregor and Dana White. Um, Dana has already sort of threatened Conor McGregor, saying that if he decides to go further with this Floyd fight, leaving the UFC in the dust while under the UFC contract, he's in line for an epic fall, which I think means taking, stripping the UFC lightweight belt away from Conor McGregor, which would not be the first time the UFC has done this. They did this back in December, a few weeks back, uh, in the wake of Daniel Cormier's injury for the main event. He was stripped off that main event. They promoted the Holloway-Pettis fight as the interim featherweight fight and promoted Jose Aldo, the interim champion, as the undisputed featherweight champion. The belt was stripped from Conor McGregor. So there could be a situation where two belts were stripped from Conor McGregor. So does the UFC need George St. Pierre? Yes. Dana White, what are you waiting for? There's one guy that's out there that wants a money fight. He's the middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisbing. He wants a middleweight title fight that will provide him with deeper pockets. GSP is that guy. You're all about putting fighters in position to win two weight classes when it's Conor McGregor, what about putting a fighter in a position to put two belts attached to his name that is George St. Pierre, one of the biggest draws in the company's history until the days of Conor McGregor. Conor is not doing any favors for the UFC right now. George wants to do favors for the UFC right now. George wants to come back. Why not put why not put Bisbing versus GSP together? Tell you all Romero, wait in the wings. You'll get your shot. Make that fight happen. No Ronda. John Jones is unreliable. Connor is out. Brock Lesnar's a douche. Make the GSP fight happen. Make put if you're not gonna put GSP in an automatic title fight, put GSP up against Anderson Silva. Put GSP up against uh Rockhold, put him up against somebody that's intriguing and make GSP a draw again. Make GSP a draw again. That's my hashtag. Slash Donald Trumpish hashtag. Make GSP a draw again. The UFC needs him. 
Take care, guys.